Hello guys, we'll continue our topic about Git and in the first part of the series we were talking about branches and how to set it all up and now we're diving into specific examples of what could go wrong when working with Git. And number one is working on two features at the same time. Often you have a situation, you work on one feature, then you make a pull request and then until someone approves that you need to start a new feature, so how to avoid conflicts. Let's take a look. For example, you're working on a develop branch as shown by our git status and we create a new feature branch for a feature, for example, add surname to the user table. So git checkout minus b. We can call a branch just the name or feature slash like a subfolder user surname, for example. Then we make our changes. So for example, in the user model, we add that to fillable surname, then we add a migration file, then we fill it in with data, surname, and now we're ready to commit. So git status again, there are two files changed, git add, git commit, surname for user, for example, git push, and I don't remember the syntax, let's copy and paste again, like this. So now we have a new branch up there and we're ready to make a pull request to whoever wants to approve that feature. We go to GitHub. It shows that it has recent pushes. We compare, we do pull request to develop branch and we create a pull request and we're done. Now, what happens until someone's approved that feature? We receive a new task also related to that new user and what do we do? A typical mistake that I see from junior developers or for those who are new to Git is continue working on the same branch, on the same feature branch. And that's why those branches are called feature branch because every branch is related to only one feature. So if you have a new feature of, for example, adding another field to the user or let's say enable email verification for users, then you need to check out the develop again, then create another feature branch from develop and continue on that separate branch. So visually, here's your develop, here's your one branch and here's your another branch. So the second branch doesn't know anything about the first branch. Let's exactly do that. But first I will explain the reasons. So while approving the first task, the person who is approving that will have much better time if you stick to only one feature and the code in the pull request here will be related only to that feature. If you add more code to the same branch, then it will be automatically added to that pull request and will confuse that person who is approving what is that code about? Is there additional code related to another feature, but still in that pull request? It adds confusion. So one feature branch, only code for that branch, and you continue. So we check out the develop again with git checkout develop. We're on branch develop, then we create another feature branch. Let's look at the history. Yeah, feature username, for example, user email verify, something like that. So we have another new branch, good. Now we implement our changes. And from what I remember in the user model, it's enough to have implement must verify email and then the user will be notified with email verification email and that's it. So only one file changed. Let's check that status. Okay. Git commit verify user email, git push. Again, we need to git push to a new branch. I always keep forgetting some syntax, so it's a helpful thing to copy paste. Okay, great. We have a new branch. Then we go to the GitHub again, and it will show that user verify email branch has new changes. And we may open another pull request to develop with verify user email, and it will allow us to verify and to submit a pull request. Great. So let's say we approve the first pull request and we confirm the merge and we delete the branch because it's not needed anymore. And then we go to another pull request to check that out. There's only one pull request here. And inside of that pull request, we see files changed one and we see the change only related to that verify user email. So that's really convenient. Personally, I quite often approve pull requests from colleagues just from my phone. So I receive the notification, open the GitHub, and if there are only a few files and it's clear, then it's easy to approve and then they don't have to wait for me. So basically all this example is for one thought, create separate branch for separate feature. Now let's talk about conflicts, how to solve them and how to avoid them in the first place. 
So imagine a scenario, you've pushed another feature branch to another new field of user, and then someone merges that pull request. The only change is just about field in the fillables. Okay, it's merged, and then you get another task to add, for example, another field. That branch is deleted already on the remote. Okay, and locally, we are on that still feature branch, and we add another user field, for example, country or whatever. What do we do? We check out develop. And then we create another feature branch. So git checkout minus b user country, for example. But stop. In this case, a golden rule is before starting any new feature, you have to pull down the changes from develop. Especially when working in a team, there's a big chance that someone else had their pull request merged into the same develop, which had changes, which may conflict with the file that you want to edit now, its user model. Or even if you don't have a conflict, it's still the best case scenario to have the latest version of the application on your local computer. So you should do git pull origin develop. But I won't do that specifically now, and I will simulate a conflict and I will show you how to resolve it. So let's say we don't, we miss the latest changes from the develop and we do git checkout, our branch feature user country okay we add that country field here and did you see that change the change that we made ourselves is not available to us because on the feature branch in here in user country user country doesn't know anything about user about because it's merged only remotely but we don't have in our develop the latest develop from the origin and that exactly will be the conflict so maybe we skip that and add a country here, git status, okay. We push that branch again as a new branch, we will do a pull request and we'll see what happens. So we create a pull request from user country to develop. And now you see cannot automatically merge, which is a conflict. Don't worry, you can create a pull request, but then the request approver will see that this is a conflict. But let's try to do that. So we create a pull request, good. Then it has conflicts within user model, and that approver will see that, and typically what happens, they will get back to you and ask you to resolve that conflict, because they don't know what should be the latest version of the file. So it's your responsibility to resolve the conflict, and how to do that. Let's do it step by step. So currently, where are we? Git status, it's on our feature branch. We do git checkout develop. Now we are on a develop branch, then we pull down the latest changes, origin develop. Okay, and we have our latest changes, and then we switch back to our feature branch. So checkout feature user country. And then we do merge develop into our current branch, which is git checkout, develop. Sorry, it's not git checkout, it's git merge. So we check out back to our branch and we do git merge, develop. And it will show a conflict, which is exactly what we were expecting. Then we go to our IDE, in my case, it's PHP Storm, and it will show exactly the conflict like this. With those arrows and you have head, which is your current head, your current version of the code, and then this is from another branch, from develop. And you need to resolve the conflicts by leaving the version that you actually need or merging two versions like this one and removing those conflicts. So now you have both country and about. And now that conflict is resolved. Git status. Then again, we add the new changes. Conflict fixed, for example. Git push to our branch. And now look what happens in the GitHub here. It's automatically refreshed. I didn't even refresh the page. So conflict fixed becomes another commit to the same feature branch. And now there is no conflict anymore. And the approver may approve the pull request. And if we go to files changed, you will see only one change. So this is how you typically resolve the conflicts or to avoid them just before creating a new feature branch or before starting a feature always do git pull origin develop 
or whatever is your main branch. Maybe you don't use develop, so then do git pull origin main or origin master. So I guess that's it for short git series from two parts. I wanted to show you the typical scenarios and typical conflicts and how to solve them. And this is, by the way, my version of doing that. Different teams may have different branches and different philosophies and different opinions. So my way is only one way, but not the correct way necessarily. So talk to your teammates about how to do that in your version. And if you have more ideas on what to talk about related to Git, various scenarios, various situations, maybe I will shoot another video with your questions and my answers. So shoot in the comments below any questions that you have, and I will answer them either in the comments or in a separate video in the future. And if you want to support my future videos, the channel is called Laravel Daily and the videos are published daily. It's more than two months that I haven't skipped a day of a video. And you may support that financially by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen. It's not a donation. You would get the value from my courses, Admin Panel Generator or Livewire Kit. And also you will support me and my team to have more time for these free videos on YouTube. See you guys in other videos.